Preparing Nellie to do a day's work has become a well-practiced routine. OK, please, now the keys are in. Right, keys in. Can you check this oil level, please, Harry? Oil OK. Right, can you check this temperatures, please, Malcolm? OK, disc up to speed. Hello, alternator house. Disc oil and temperature OK. Is it OK your end? Motor, alternator on. OK for standby. Switch on standby, Peter. Standby coming on. Okay, HD coming on. The computer is ready for use. At this school, they learn to use it early. In the first form, they're taught how it works by playing at being a computer. A raised arm denotes an electrical signal, a lowered arm denotes its absence. In this way, they can simulate the two number language of computers. Now we're going to add two numbers together in exactly the same way as a computer does. Register A holding the binary equivalent of 38. Register B holding the binary equivalent of 23. Ready for the clock? The clock, the banging of the master's hand on the desk, represents the pulse in an actual computer which causes all the digits to move along one when each step of the operation is completed. And the answer, 61, in register C. Now the same sum again. Register A, holding the binary equivalent of 38. Register B, holding the binary equivalent of 23. These two rows of boys to the master's left are the numbers to be added. The two boys at the far end of each row are at the business end where the calculating is done. As each pair of digits reaches the far end, its sum is computed by boys representing the adder. The sum is then fed step by step into the front row of six boys until the addition is complete. And the answer? 61. The computer completes each step in the adding process in a fraction of a second. The flickering digits on the oscilloscope represent the same binary code as the boys' arms in the classroom. The boys have written a number of programs for the computer. One program tests the speed of your reactions. When the note changes, you press a button. Being tested here, the physics master who supervises the project but believes in allowing the boys to do almost everything for themselves. The reaction is measured to an accuracy of one thousandth of a second. The boys haven't yet got round to training the computer to play chess, but already it's very good at one of the simpler games. Well, to play noughts and crosses, you make your moves on the keyboard, which has the numbers one to nine, in, well, what is roughly a noughts and crosses grid. The numbers are printed out at the beginning of the game, in the grid, so you know where they are. You then type where you want to go, and then the computer makes it move, its move, and prints out both your, net, your move and its move at the same time. Your cross is, the computer is naught. If you go on top of one of its places, it'll print out cheat, I have won. If you go on top of one of your own ones, one of your previous moves, it'll print out fool and then go on to take a move of its own. If it wins, it'll print out I have won. If you win, which is impossible, you can't possibly, but it will print out you have won if you did, it'll print out a draw if it can't go at all because everything's full up. Nelly was built before the more sophisticated modern computer languages were devised, so one of the boys has written a language simple enough for Nelly to cope with. Well, I devised Minigol so that first years and second years, who found it difficult and you'd expect them to, to learn machine code programming, could program things much more easily. And already second formers are using this language to write programs to solve mathematical problems which have been set for them in class. Problems they would have taken much longer to do without the computer. Now 
Number 16. Junior boys also lend a hand with maintaining the computer. Being now rather old and not as tough as a new computer, Nellie takes unkindly to starting up and shutting down a couple of times a day. Diodes are particularly liable to failure, and it's the first former's job to test them. Finally, a program that enables the boys to write tunes and have them performed by Nellie. The boys have calculated that Nellie fails on average once in every 12 hours of running time. When this happens, they go into their breakdown routine. HT gone off. Thermostats. Check thermostats, please, Peter. Line failure. Coping with faults like this one gives the boys a fundamental lesson in electronics. Feeling a change line four, please. System centre one. Most adults still find computers a bit of a mystery. But for youngsters like these, brought up in a world of diodes and transistors, there's nothing mysterious about a computer.